Brothers and sisters, today I'd like to talk to you about religious euphemisms. They're religious catchphrases that seem to be repeated over and over and over again. Uh, maybe even for generations to the point where people assume that they're true. But they may have only a remote basis in the Word of God. One that I've heard often is, cleanliness is next to godliness. Now, true or false? Is cleanliness is next to godliness in the Word of God or not? I mean, just because you feel clean doesn't mean you are clean. Now, I know one way to get clean is to get baptized in the name of Jesus and truly have a repent heart. No amount of that is going to clean the sin off of your conscience. So cleanliness is truly not next to godliness. Another one is, you know, if I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and let him into my heart, then I'll be saved. There is a lot of error in that very blanket, generalized statement. For one thing, you have to believe and be baptized, and baptized to be saved. That's part of the salvation formula. People often forget baptism. And when they get baptized, it's baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, not the conception of, of, of flesh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No one ever got baptized in the Bible in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I've heard this formula said over somebody one time. I, Chris Robert Esplanade, baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I baptize you. Excuse me, I said, I'm going to, I will baptize you, Chris, for Robert Esplanade, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, whose name was this said? While you were baptized, my whole name. There was no reference to the name of Jesus in that baptismal formula. He wasn't mentioned whatsoever. So it seems to me that you got baptized in your own name. And you, what do you say to yourself? That doesn't make any sense. And, you know, we need, brothers and children, brothers and sisters, we need to have the spirit of the Bereans. What did the Bereans do? They searched the word of God. Well, I've got a new spiritual catchphrase for you. If it's not scripture, Jesus, it's Babel or Wood. So whenever you hear something that sounds good, that seems to be deceiving, that seems to warm your heart, that seems kind of good or spiritual or religious, think about it real hard. After you've thought about it real hard, open up your word of God if it's really in the word of God or not. Most of the time you'll probably find some variation of that idea but you'll find a much deeper truth than that shallow catchphrase that you seem to hear from everybody and they seem to assume it's true. Now the, the greatest danger is some of these catchphrases are repeated so many times over the course of years or maybe even hundreds of years it becomes part of a doctrine of a church doctrine. It's assumed to be ironclad truth not investigated truly it's just assumed to be true because my father believes it his father believes it and his father believes it so it's got to be good enough for me but guess what it's not good enough for you it's what the word of god says what the word of god says is what is good enough for you do not pay attention to what your relatives have said to what your pastor has said you know no matter what you think of the man he says something that doesn't line up to the word of God don't listen to it it's not the truth so that's the root of human tradition of religious human tradition where something is assumed to be true and then you challenge it and they'll say well we believe we've been believing this for hundreds of years how dare you challenge one of our ideas that we believe so many times are you saying my dad's wrong are you saying his dad's wrong well, who are you anyways that's religious thinking did you also know that the word Trinity is not in the Bible? The concept of the Trinity is not really in the Bible. It's something that somebody dreamed up in a Catholic church so many years ago at the Council of Nicaea. And it's been, been repeated since the 12th century over and over and over again. And people 
assume it's true. Well, guess what? It's kind of true, but in its fullest extent, it becomes idolatry. It's like three gods. You believe in three gods? Now really think about it. Because that's what the Trinity becomes. If you really think about it, Father God, Son God, Holy Ghost God, is that one God or is that three gods? The human tendency is to believe in multiple gods. No point in having idols. Now, I know we don't have graven idols sitting in the front of our yard, but anything that we put above God or describe as God that isn't God is an idol in our life. If you put it above God, then it is an idol. And idols will burn whether they're made of wood or not. So watch, children, and check it out. In your